didn't want to be a fireman or an astronaut, I wanted to be a maths teacher. Um, I've always enjoyed maths, so from an early age it was something that I was keen on and I knew I would probably enjoy doing at university. I decided I wanted to do mathematics probably around GCSE level. I kind of realised that's what I was quite good at and throughout AS I kind of confirmed my decision. It chose me in a certain way. I, I growing up, uh, didn't want to be a fireman or astronaut. I wanted to be a maths teacher. It's a bit nerdy. Maths can be quite hard, but when you really, like, when you crack the problem, it's a really good feeling. What's quite exciting about the way maths is structured is that in your first year, you get to try a lot of different things and you get to do kind of the basics and everything. And after that, you start to make more choices and you can kind of really decide what you think is what you're most interested in. Then when you move into the second and third year, and even more so if you choose to do the fourth year, um, you start to get um, more and more options. Um, and then it does become quite flexible and you can specialise a great deal. There's a wealth of variety there in what, what sort of thing they might do. There's the sort of traditional things that people would expect, the algebra and geometry courses, but there's plenty of mathematical physics, lots of probability, you can go off into mathematical genetics, mathematical biology, huge sort of variety of areas that might, you go, might go into so people don't perhaps realise just how various mathematics is at this level. Personally, I think it's important to keep a level of breadth. Um, because I think that's one of the most exciting things about the subject is actually connections between different areas and I think you really start to see that uh, if you keep um, a range of courses going. Okay, so I'll probably specialise in the pure side of maths um, so other people will specialise in the applied um, and then once you specialise I think you can go further so maybe I'm not sure yet either analysis or algebra one of the two. One thing that we're quite uh, excited about and is new for the course is the fourth year mathematics and physics stream. So you'll be able to apply to transfer to a mathematics and physics fourth year stream. Um, this will be courses in theoretical physics and should you go into that stream at the end with, with your fourth year you'd get an M Math Phys uh, in mathematics and physics. You don't really have to decide whether you're doing a three or a four year course until um, relatively late uh, in your degree in fact. I think some of my, I'm a personal tutor to third year students and I think some of them are still not 100% decided. It's largely going to be exam based, there may be various project work, computer project work, you can do dissertations, there's an ambassador scheme that will take you into local schools and various other things, but at least three quarters I would say of your work is going to be exam assessed. Every week I have ten lectures, so it's two lectures a day and they're nine till one and then I would say I probably have three tutorials, about an hour each, so that's two of us with a tutor, and then I have five problem sheets to complete, each of which probably takes three or four hours. One of the biggest things is not being too afraid that you haven't come out with at least half of the problem sheet done, because most of the time, they, they're designed so that you won't get it all right. I was told by a historian that the mathematicians are the most social people in college because with the problem sheets, as long as you don't copy, if you work together to figure something out, that's, that's fine. I think the key things that I did find surprising were just trying to learn that new method of answering a question, that new technique of trying to give a proof rather than giving a numerical answer. So are you someone who really wants to understand mathematics, why something is true, or are you looking just to apply it? So if you really want to understand where this result came from, why, the why is behind it and so on, you're thinking like a mathematician. Engineering has a lot in common with maths. Um, it just depends perhaps what sort of mind you have. Um, so there are a number of other courses, but I would urge you to think very seriously about maths. <laughs> Where Oxford's at an advantage is that it's a large department and that means the wealth of options we can offer in the third and fourth year is much more than you might expect at many universities. The collegiate system in Oxford means that there are a lot of different libraries uh, as well as the central university libraries so there are a lot of books available um, and a lot of course specific books uh, available in the individual college libraries.
having tutors within college is great. If you need anything, you can email or just go and see them. They're literally like two minutes away. One of the biggest differences between mathematics at Oxford and mathematics anywhere else is the tutorial system. One of the nice things about being a tutor in Oxford is that you really get to know your students. You are there in a tutorial, one tutor, two students usually. You get to see them develop, you get to answer their questions that they have, you get to the, see them enjoying the degree, much more so than you would if these, this was a person at the back of a lecture theatre. And we'll be given one or two problem sheets back that we've done during the week. And if there's questions or any problems from that week, we'll go through them then it's normally a bit more open, like is there anything else you, you're stuck on, anything else you want to know, um, and those questions will get answered. And if there's still time left, then the tutor often gives you another problem or shows you something new to do with that subject that you don't necessarily need to know for exams, but is still interested. I hope students get stuck, to be honest. This is, a, this is something I think is a very valuable experience. Getting stuck, we all get stuck. I know I'd always spend quite a lot of time on problem sheets, re, really struggling on questions. I could, I'd, I could spend about six hours just looking at a question and have no idea, and then turn to a tutorial, have my tutor explain in about five minutes and suddenly it all clicks. We see people from such different educational backgrounds. First of all, we're used to this. The tutorial system is very good for you know, picking up on pieces and gaps that people haven't met before. It's a very individual way of teaching. But ultimately, even at the end of the first term, certainly by the end of the first year, how well someone's doing is very much a product of how hard have they been working at this course. I did a summer school in Oxford, the unique summer school, and I just love the city and love the course, so that's really what made my mind up. I thought to myself that it was worth a punt. I mean, five university choices, you might as well go for it. So what we're looking for in the application process is really some highly refined analytical thinking that people are capable of um, and also some uh, creative thinking as well. We are really looking at whether you are able to do maths. Perhaps a slightly subtler thing than that, whether you could be able to do maths. My first interview I was given questions beforehand so I was told to answer as much as I could and then I went into the interview, told them what I'd done and they helped me to complete solutions. All of the questions are designed so that you will get them all wrong. But it's more about your intuition, how you would try and solve the problem and how with a few hints from the tutor who's interviewing you because they will give you hints and you will definitely need them. Fluency with high school algebra is very, very useful in an interview. Not because we really want to test that you can solve a set of equations very quickly, but because it's a basic building block of the mathematics, it's a basic language, if you will. Certainly one sensible thing to be doing is getting used to our admissions test format. Uh, as part of the process, you have to do the mathematics admissions test, which is taken in early November. And this is something might, that might seem quite different to any other exam you've taken before. For me, there is, there is value there in the personal statement as a platform for further conversation. So as far as possible, say things in your personal statement you would be happy to talk about. If you're the type of person that perhaps feels nervous about talking about mathematics or you've never really done that before, it can be a good idea perhaps talking to a, a tutor or talking to a friend who you just ha happens to enjoy mathematics as well and think about discuss discussing a problem, explain something to someone else. If you are not the best in your class at maths at school, that doesn't necessarily rule you out. Um, it is a very different beast, mathematics at university from mathematics at school. Um, and so don't count yourself out uh, in that situation. The most important thing really, if you're preparing for university mathematics wherever, is that you're doing challenging mathematics. Uh, there's not a lot of point doing mathematics that really is just learning at the same level. We like people who have been doing more challenging problems, perhaps like step problems or BMO type problems, or just trying to find out more things that are, you know, 
deepening their understanding, extending them rather than just getting a broader sense of one or more, one or more, two more similar techniques. I was rung up the day after I got home from the interviews. They, and so that was quite a nice surprise. It was just before Christmas. Mathematicians make for some of the most employable people. They can be very well paid, but they can also be um, very various in their employment that they go into afterwards. Many of them go into finance, of course. Um, a number will go into research. Uh, teaching, um, business, which I know is a rather generalised sort of uh, thing, but I think uh, from a mathematical platform you really are very, very well placed to turn your hand to um, a lot of kind of problem solving situations. When I'm finished, I'm not sure exactly what I want to do yet, I'm still quite undecided. I'm not really sure what I want to do next, but definitely something that involves maths to some degree. So Oxford is a lot more accommodating than you think it is. That it's not, you shouldn't be too afraid to ask for anything or to try and get people to help you out with anything that you need. It isn't as, isn't, there isn't as serious of an attitude as you'd originally think before you came here. It is a lot more friendly.